Daryl Scott needs to take his cocaine sniffing, free basing, dump ass back to wherever he came from. This mother has the nerve to talk about millions of Christian people, apostolics, won't vote for Hillary Clinton because she's a woman and because they take the traditional uh, viewpoint as far as the Bible's concerned. Well, hell, that's just like saying the Hasidic Jews won't vote for a woman. That's a bunch of bullshit. Now, I want to know how he came up with the millions of, unless he's talked to millions of people who've told him this, or he's talked to people that represent millions of black apostolic people. That it's, that's, it's just totally asinine. All right, I'm going to play the clip from CNN where this clown uh, makes that claim. A pastor who is supporting Donald Trump is under fire for uh, a comment that some are calling sexist. Pastor Daryl Scott took to Twitter to say this. Millions of black apostolics don't believe in women pastors, much less women presidents. They will never vote for Hillary. Joining me now is Pastor Scott himself, also with me, Bishop Joel Trout of uh, Harvest Time Apostolic Ministries. Uh, both Trump supporters. Good to have both of you this morning. Thank you. Let's Hey, Pastor Scott, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Pastor Scott, let's start with you again. I, I know that 140 characters didn't always give us the time and space we want to make an argument. So take 20 or 30 seconds and tell us what, what you mean by this, that because she is a woman, black apostolics will not vote for her. Well, there is a huge uh, segment of Christianity, one that's Pentecostals or apostolics, that hold to a uh, literal view of the Bible, a literal interpretation of the scriptures. And as a result, their policy is that women cannot hold offices in the church. They use the scripture from the Apostle Paul that says, thou shalt not suffer a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over a man. Now, some apply that only to the church, that within the parameters of the church, a woman can't be a bishop or a pastor or hold a, hold a, a, a position of authority. But I know some that I've discussed this with on a number of occasions that mm -hmm. hold to that interpretation in all parameters of life. And they told me out of their mouth, oh no, we, they didn't say I, they said we would never vote for a woman. Now this was during the right. Republican primaries. Uh, they weren't supporting uh, me, Trump, but they wouldn't vote for a woman. Okay, let me. See, now he said some. How many million black apostolics are there in the country? He said some. If you're talking about three million black apostolics, that's probably the majority uh, of the uh, black churchgoers in the country. And if it's not, it's got to be damn close. So he's full of shit. He's just throwing hyperbole out there. But And he's going to get shot down by this other uh, uh, bishop. Take this to Bishop Trout. Then you hear this. You're not. You're not a supporter of, of Hillary Clinton's, but you're not voting for her, uh, not because she's he's, she's a woman for other reasons. But what do you make of what you're hearing from Pastor Scott here? That there will be many. He says millions, but let's say many who will not vote for her because she is a woman. Well, I'm a fifth generation apostolic, and I'll say this about the apostolic church: it's evolved over the years to the point that we have now pastors and uh, even women bishops in the apostolic movement. The other thing to consider is that the apostolic church is made up of probably 75 to 80 percent women. But, but gender is, is really a, a distraction. The real issue to me about Hillary is this. Last year, April 2015, at a women's national or worldwide summit, she declared that the church needs to change its views on abortion. That to me is is more dangerous than her gender. And you would say that that is the primary reason that you're not supporting her, Bishop? Exactly. Okay. She, she's challenged the church to change itself. And that takes a lot of hubris to do so. All right. All right. Now, this guy is Joe Jackoff, as far as I'm concerned as well. And let me back up, because I don't know this guy. So let, let me back up and say, I believe that he is 
not as enlightened as he should or could be. First things first, okay? There's nobody putting a gun to a woman's head to have an abortion, okay? That's a matter of choice. Now, if he's so against choice, then he's got a problem with the book of Genesis, okay? Because God gave man free will in order for him to make a choice. Based on what this guy is saying, God shouldn't have gave man free will in order for him to make a choice. And then we wouldn't be in, I quote unquote, the mess we're in right now. No, God doesn't make mistakes. He gave man free will to make a choice. It's up to us to make whatever choice that we believe is right. Okay. Now, if, if you're going to go biblically, yeah, uh, there's the possibility that the abortion is not that great, but there is abortion in the Bible and these guys will never acknowledge that. There is a chapter, and I can't remember which one it is now, that if you think you got a problem uh, with uh, your wife, you are give, to give her this concoction to drink, and if the child survives, then everything is straight, and if the child don't, then you know the, the baby dies, and she gets to get stoned as well. So, now that being said, let's get back on track. So Scott, let me come to you because you tweeted this out maybe four or five times on the day that you sent it out. And on one of the tweets, you said more blacks will vote for Trump than people think. So are you looking for those votes from black apostolics who are not going to support Hillary Clinton because she's a woman? Well, once again, I didn't want to make a blanket indictment against all apostolics. Uh, I know for a fact that there are a number of apostolics that... Uh, they don't hold to those ultra conservative or ultra tradi traditional views. It's just that I've had conversations with those from some major den denominations that have stated that but, because she's a woman, they cannot. Do, but do you welcome those not. votes? Do you welcome those votes for people who won't vote for Hillary Clinton because she's a woman? Welcome any vote uh, for Donald Trump because he's my candidate of choice. However, I do know that there. Oh, okay, so. Uh, you also welcome them the white supremacist vote too. You just said you welcome any vote for Donald Trump because he's your candidate. And there's a whole bunch of white supremacists out there that want to vote for Donald Trump. And I'm sure you have no problem uh, making a public statement that you welcome the votes of uh, the alternate right white supremacists. There's a huge undercurrent of black Americans that fear the backlash and the ostracism that would come from their public support of Donald Trump but they've told me in private, I'm talking about some pretty big names that have national reputations that have said, you know, I don't want to risk offending my constituency or losing any of my supporters, but I will vote for Donald Trump. Now, I have and why is it that these guys always say there's some really big names, and they, but they can never mention these big names because, quote unquote, they, those big names don't, don't want to risk losing their constituencies. Well, if those big names were such stand-up people, they wouldn't have any problem voicing their opinions. So Daryl Scott, yeah, that's not holding water either. A term that I coined for them, I call them the incog Negroes. <laughs> okay, let me come to you, Bishop. The incog Negroes, really? Chip Trout, um, and one of the issues we talked about before the break was this birther uh, claim from 2011. Um, uh, Donald Trump uh, apparently now believes that, that Barack Obama was, as he was, born in the United States. Let's listen to two of his supporters. Does he believe he would succeed a legitimate president? Donald Trump believes now that he was born in the United States. Do you think it's time for Donald Trump to acknowledge that all that birther nonsense was a mistake and to apologize so that African-American voters to whom he's reaching out might be more willing to listen to his message? Uh, I think that would be a good idea, absolutely. So Bishop Trout, do you believe that, that your congregants would appreciate hearing from Donald Trump on this issue that he now believes that Barack Obama was born in the U.S. from his own mouth? Wait for it. Wait for it. Here comes the spin. Here comes the Trump spin. Well, I think our congregants would like to hear from Hillary, who was the one that brought it up in the first place. Okay, let me bring you back to, to facts here. It was Mark Penn, who was one of her advisors and one of her strategists, not from Hillary Clinton herself, but I hear your point. 
Now, fact, okay, PolitiFact went in and checked on that too, and they're indicating that Mark Penn, who was part of the uh, Clinton campaign in 2008, did not do that. Now, I'm, I'm going to recheck that, okay, but they have indicated that nothing, as far as the Bertha movement is concerned, came out of the Clinton camp. And again, as a matter of fact, I direct you to go to PolitiFact and check for yourself because uh, they, um, they're nonpartisan. So normally when they check something, it's pretty much legit. But it was reported this morning that PolitiFact fact-checked that particular statement and no one from the Clinton campaign uh, made Bertha comments. Now, I had heard the same thing and I was kind of pushing that until I checked. But the point of my question was, uh, Donald Trump is now running for president. Right. Donald Trump sent investigators to Hawaii. Donald Trump put up $5 million uh, bounty for information about a birth certificate. Should Donald Trump now apologize and speak from his own mouth, not through his surrogates or supporters, that he believes the president was born in Hawaii? That's up to him to make that decision. I don't think it will necessarily... Of course that's up to him. He just asked you what you thought he should do they sway a lot of votes the people that are invested in his campaign are, are not necessarily going to be moved by the fact that the birth and in fact he's running against hillary and not obama okay let me come to you uh, uh, uh pastor uh, really quickly there uh pastor scott um why haven't we heard from donald trump on this although his supporters and surrogates are, are, are saying that he now believes that the president was born in the u.s but I'm not going to say believes. I'm going to say he gradually accepts the fact that the president was born in the United States. So he doesn't believe it? Is that what you're telling me? I said he grudgingly accepts it. Listen, in 2010... The new See, he didn't answer the question. He grudgingly accepts, but he won't say that he believes it. Like the other two surrogates, uh, Giuliani says he believes it. Uh, obviously, Ben Carson says he believes it. Even Kellyanne Conway uh, was on CNN. She even says he believes it. But your dumbass can't even say he believes it. He grudgingly accepts it. Why does he grudgingly accept it? A fact is a fact. He should be happy to accept a fact. Asshole. The Times conducted a poll where 43% of American citizens believe that Barack Obama was born outside of the United States. That's 100. That's a goddamn lie. It wasn't 43% of the Americans, it was 43% of Republicans. So your number is like way off. 30 million people. Okay, now, well then, if, if, if what you're saying is true, then 130 million people would be wrong because the president was born in Hawaii. We got to wrap it here. Pastor Daryl Scott, Bishop Joel Trout, we got to wrap it. I love it, I love it, I love it. He cut his butt off while he was still talking. <laughs> Pastor, I don't even really want to call him. Daryl Scott is a total idiot, ingrained, cocaine sniffing, free basin, big foreheaded asshole. And if he wasn't, why didn't he have Donald Trump uh, give that speech that uh, he gave in uh, Detroit. Why didn't he have him give that speech at his church in Cleveland or that other uh, charlatan, uh, 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 Mark Burns? Uh, why didn't he have him? Uh, why did Mark Burns have Donald Trump speak at his church? Oh, I forget. He didn't really doesn't have a church. He just has a studio that he does uh, tell uh, evangelism from. Oh, well, what about uh, uh, Amarosa? How come she didn't have Trump speak at her church in East LA? Oh, because there's only like 50 people that uh, go to that church and they're surrounded by a bunch of Hispanic people. You know, these guys, they're all a bunch of phonies. Every last one of them.